If you're using C Sharp with Godot, I've got the following tips and tricks for you. Send custom objects as signal arguments. You may have encountered this issue, where you define your own class in C Sharp, try to send it as a signal argument, and experience this error. This happens because Godot cannot marshal your custom type under the hood and doesn't know what to do with it. You can easily fix this by having your object extend reference. If you extend reference, not only can your class be sent in signal arguments, but it will also be reference counted and freed automatically, so you don't need to worry about memory leaks. Run code manually in the editor. Getters and setters, property accessors as they're officially called in C Sharp, are very handy tools, especially when you need to run some tool script code manually. Here, I have a circle that is drawn with a random color. I want to be able to randomize the color until I get one I want. I can do this by creating an export boolean, returning false in the getter, and calling my randomization code in the setter. Oh, and don't forget to add the tool attribute above your class. Now you can build the game and click the checkbox and the circle's color will change. You can use this method to run any tool script code you want manually in the editor. Extension methods. For those of you new to C Sharp, you may be unaware of extension methods. These allow you to add new methods to objects that are otherwise unmodifiable. I like to do this for operations that I do regularly. For example, rotating a vector 2 using degrees instead of radians. This can be easily done with the following snippet. Extension methods will always work like this. You first specify public static, then your return type, then the method name, and then your first argument should be this, your type, in my case it's vector2, and then any arguments that need to go into the method. And so now when you use it, in my case with the vector 2 rotated degrees, you can see that I can simply call rotated degrees on the vector 2, which doesn't exist by default, and I can pass it my argument and the vector will be rotated appropriately. Custom template script. Did you know you can create your own C Sharp template scripts to use when creating a new script? This is similar to Godot's default script template. Here's mine. Go ahead and place your script at this path, restart your editor, and now you can try to add a C Sharp script to an object and it will show up in the script creation dialog. The is keyword. When you're handling signals like area entered from an area 2D node, you get an area 2D as an argument. This area 2D may belong to the player, but how do we check that? With the following statement, if other area dot owner is player player. Using the is keyword, we'll first check that the area 2D's owner, for instance, is an instance of player, and if so, we'll assign that to the variable player. Now we can do any logic we need to do with the player object. Ignore signal arguments. Similarly, sometimes you don't care what the arguments of a signal are. In this case, you can use a plain old object type to handle all potential argument types. Override to string. Have you ever tried to print a C Sharp object in Godot's console, but gotten this useless string? To make printing your classes more informative, override the to string method in your class and return any string you want. Godot Utilities. And finally, I have created my own C Sharp library called Godot Utilities, which I use in each of my projects. You get some nice extension methods, as well as attributes for automatically assigning nodes. Take a look. I can use the node attribute to get any child node within the scene. Once you've got these attributes configured, you can call this.wireNodes, which is an extension method. And I like to call this within the notification that the object was instanced, like this. And when you call this, it will automatically connect the nodes that share the name of the member. You can also supply a specific path as an argument if you have a node that's named differently than your member and you don't want to change it, or if you've got nested nodes. But if you have nested nodes, you should know that this node attribute works with unique node names as well. You don't even need to add the percent yourself. It will automatically try to find that if it can't find a direct child. And that's it for my Godot C Sharp tips and tricks. If you guys want to see more C Sharp content, let me know in the comments. I've been thinking about creating a few more C Sharp tutorials and going a little bit more in depth onto that side of things. So again, let me know if you want to see it. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Oh.
If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe. If you want to learn how to build a 2D platformer in the Godot engine, check out my Udemy course, link in the description. If you want to support my work, you can pick up one of my games on Steam or itch.io, links in the description as well.